Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, with reverence, Lord. You are our heavenly Father. You are our King. You are the Lord over our lives, heavenly Father. You're all knowing. You're all powerful. You're everywhere we, that we need you to be, Heavenly Father. Someone needs you over here. Someone needs you over there. And we give you glory because you're everywhere, Heavenly Father. We thank you today, Lord, because you're so good and you're so kind, Lord. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord, knowing and unknowing, Lord. And then help us to follow your word for correction, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you today. There are so many things we can thank you for, Lord. You woke us up this morning, hallelujah, Jesus. We put one foot in front of the other, Heavenly Father. We can raise our hands and give you praise, hallelujah, Jesus. You gave us shelter, Lord. You gave us cars, Lord. You gave us food, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. Take a moment and just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. You're so good, Lord. We thank Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Now, Lord, we want to prepare our hearts and our minds and our ears for the word, Lord. Anoint our pastor from head to toe, side to side, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord. Lord, and give us a hearing ear and an open heart, Heavenly Father. Those that are sick and shut in, Lord, we ask for your healing virtue, Heavenly Father. Those that need comfort, we ask you to go in and comfort them, Lord. We know you know how to work out every situation. Those who need cars, those who need jobs, those who need anointing. Lord, we know you got it, Heavenly Father. You can fix it all, Jesus. We just have to learn to praise you, Lord. Praise you in the situation. Praise you out of the situation. Praise you when there is no situation. Lord, I just want to give you glory today. Hallelujah, glory. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you glory. I give you praise. Lord, in each and every blessing we ask for, Lord, we believe it. We stand on your word. We stand on your promise. We ask all these things to your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. I have to say like Jesus said if, if we don't praise him the rocks will cry out amen <laughs> yeah let's say the rest of it I don't need no rocks crying out for me praise God how many is happy to be in the house of the Lord today amen, amen. Yes. so glad to see all of you uh, on this Father's Day Oh, have mercy. Um, this is going to be a spinoff from last week. However, we're going to really just take this one scripture and we're just going to try our very best to open up the mysteries and the dark secrets of this particular scripture. If you have your Bible, and if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand, and they'll bring you a Bible. And um, go ahead, get him a Bible. And um, we're going to take five verses, and we're just going to talk about it. And I'm going to try my very best to have us out so we can take all of the fathers where they need to go. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Um, Sequoia, are we ready to roll? Okay, God bless. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans eight and five and we're both going to go five through ten stand on your feet uh, in reverence to, to the lord if you're able to amen as we read his word
And this is what it reads. Everybody, Romans 8, 5? Amen. 8, 5. It's on the screen also. Thank God for the screens. Amen. Amen. Let's give Amen. Sister Stephanie a hand. Amen. Amen. Praise God for you, Sister Stephanie. Amen. Amen. I know I've been making them a lot of mistakes, but I always ask, please read over again and make sure I got this down correct after typing. Say be trying to mess with my mind all the time. You know, if you can get your mind, you can get your fingers. <laughs> I used to be a great typist, but I'm trying to make sure I pre-read and I proofread and reread, unread, whatever you do. But this is how it read. Everybody there? Big buzz, yeah. Michael's up there, Craig's up there, between the two, I think. Amen. All right, I'll read loud. So it starts out, Romans 8, 5. For those, now I want you all to listen to this real close. I'm telling you that all the time, but these scriptures are really, God is just bombing me with these scriptures. Um, and this is how it says, Coming from five, but you can read this whole chapter when you get a chance. For those who live according to the flesh, I want you to get that word. I'm going to explain it to you too. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. That's heavy right there. But those who live according to the Spirit, in the New King James Version, it's a capital S. Those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded, everybody hear that, listen closely. For to be carnally minded is death. Yes. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes. As you can see, spiritually minded is two more things than carnal minded, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go up to verse 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity mm -hmm. against God. It is not subject to the law. Mm -hmm. It's a lot packed into these scriptures. Yeah. To the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Yes, sir. So then those who are in the flesh mm -hmm. cannot please God. Let me read it again. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Ninth verse says, but you are not of the flesh. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. You, 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 me, all of us in here are not in the flesh. Is that what it said? Yes, yes. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any one. Anyone does not have the spirit of Christ is not, he is not his. In other words, you're not Christ if you don't have Christ's spirit. We were touching on this this morning in Sunday school. And that 10th verse says this, very positive. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. So, Get this, understand what it's saying. If Christ is in you, this flesh, this body is dead because of sin. Because they can't dwell together. Everybody getting that? Amen. All right. I'm going to explain it a lot more. Ah, uh, let's see. Let me get, I lost my place. Uh, but the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. 
And the title of this message is Fathers, Have You Unloaded Your Baggage? Amen. Fathers, have you unloaded your baggage? You may be seated. I have traveled many, many places. I haven't been fortunate as my son to go all over the world. Nonetheless, I've traveled many, many places. I love to travel, but I don't love to come back and unpack. But you know what? I have to do it because if I don't do it when I come back, I won't do it. And laziness comes over us. Next thing you know, you're looking at that. Uh, am I going in and out? Craig's? Craig? Okay. I, I, I come back and I start looking at it, and if I start looking at it and pausing on it long enough, it won't get done. Or either I'll take a piece out here and a piece out there, and it'll be three weeks before I unpack. And so sometimes in life, we dibble and dabble and all kind of stuff. Men, talking to the fathers today. I got you mothers a couple of weeks ago, but it, it ended up in the positive. And God is going to do the same thing here. And so I found in this scripture, when the Lord gave it to me, I found in this scripture we have so many men, we have so many guys that's fleshly minded. And then it even gets worse. We have so many guys that's carnal minded. Thank you, Deacon. I needed that because that's how hot, that's how hot it is. And then I have here how to be spiritually minded. Now when you're fleshly minded and you're carnal minded, mm -hmm. there's no spirit in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if God has saved you and filled you with his Holy Spirit, we have a responsibility of keeping that built up. It doesn't mean that God has left you, but the Bible says that we suppress what has been given to us. Amen. We push it down. We yeah. try, try to push it out. Uh, yeah. But he, he said he'll never leave you or forsake, forsake you. Is that right? Yeah. We hear that all the time. And, and so in knowing that, I want you to focus on this, how easy it is to be weighted down. Amen. It's easy to be weighted down. The difference between men and women, women internalizes it, but men, have mercy, they'll go to the gym and try to get stronger, and they don't know what they're getting stronger for, and they're carrying more carnality and flesh. Does that kind of fit what I'm saying? It fits the natural, and it's going, you're going to see that it will fit the spiritual if you do it right. Amen? So let's look at the scripture. For those who live according to the flesh. Now, I'm going to be going uh, verse by verse to verse 10. However, I want you to look. I'm not giving you scriptures like I normally do, like a whole scripture, but all of these are going to be right here in Romans 8, uh, Romans 5, 8, chapter 8, 5 through 10, okay. verse by verse. Amen. And so it says here, for those, help me, Holy Ghost, for those who live according to the flesh. What does that mean, Pastor Sonny? That means the things of the world has more of our attention than the things of the Lord. Okay. 
And so when we have a fleshly mind or when our mind are, uh, is on fleshly things, listen to me close. That's because we are trying to feed our body instead of feeding our spirit. I'm going to be saying, is that making sense? A lot of times. And so that flesh can mess with us. Guys, you know that. You know how the flesh can mess with us. You know the things the devil, the devil presents. And you young Christians, not young in age, but young Christians, period. What happened? The one what happened, the ones that have came to Christ. Man, the devil is like, he's waiting with a, a wheelbarrow just to unload on you. Mm. Everything that the flesh loves yeah. and wants, yeah. then he's going to dig up more and more and summons more demons to mess with you. Yeah. To try to keep you away from the spiritual things. Yeah. This is a powerful thing. This is a yeah. powerful scripture because the, uh, the dividing of the Christ or the God or the Holy Spirit from natural uh, uh, fleshly things is not easy for us to deal with. Okay. It's not easy for us to unpack. And, and Satan knows that because he's always watching. He's always listening to what you say. He's always got some demon around you so he can summons back and say, guess what so-and-so is doing? Let's pile it on now. Let's, let's, let's make his household mad. Let's, let's make his job mad. Let, 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 just piling it on. And here we go as guys. We're just walking around like this with all this mess on our backs. Yes, yes. Body said he has... And his, uh, uh, his baby on the front. Now it's, it's the baby's and, the, and <laughs> you don't know which way to go. My God. <laughs> and so we walk through this life and these are the things we deal with. Yeah. It starts at the head. Yeah. I don't even have anybody in my house and the devil tries to mess with me. Isn't that something? Yeah. Guess what he tries to mess with me through? Yeah. This thing. So easy. I didn't know it was that easy. But now that I know, this is taboo. I use it when I need it, and I get rid of it as quick as I can. But we've got to be so careful, because then I sit down at the computer, trying to do God's work. And guess what pops up? I have to get up and go and sit, uh, get on my knees and pray again <laughs> so I can straighten up. <laughs> but that's what the, the devil does. Guys, you may not be a pastor, but if he gets his reins, and as I always say, his meat hooks in you, it's going to be rough. We have people in the church, and they don't have to be ashamed because it happens to all of us. We go through spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. If you're not, on, if you're able to get on your knees and you're not praying when you get up in the morning, it doesn't mean you have to be down there a half an hour or 45 minutes unless the Lord leads you that way. But you need to really, really pray and get the mess away from you. Because that's exactly what the devil wants you to do is to attack everybody that comes in your contact. Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. And, and how do we do that? It's, it all goes back to the spiritual, our attitudes. In our households, on our jobs, even in the line at the store. Anybody... And all these acts, point number one right here, are fleshly-minded people. Mm -hmm. Flesh, people that are, 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 that are attacked by Satan, he starts with your flesh. Uh -huh. Ooh, I 
can't rush this now. Lord, let me just make it plain. He starts with your flesh. No prayer to lead and guide you. Let me tell you about prayer first. When you truly get on your knees to pray, I'm trying not to get down there yet, but when you get on your knees to pray, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit automatically comes in. Now your thing is, are you going to hold on to it? Think about that. Are you going to Put it in the position that it needs to be in. Amen? Amen. What are you going to do after you get off your knees and you wait for the rest of the day or you start to go through the rest of your day? When we get into routines, we, f we forget about, listen to me close, we forget about, we, don't, we forget about what we're setting up. We forget about that we have got on our knees and we have asked the Holy Ghost to lead and guide me. Amen? Amen. And then all of a sudden the natural comes back in. And do you know anybody in the building? Can you tell me what the natural is? The natural is the flesh. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. So the flesh comes in. Uh -huh. Can I be me? You done forgot the prayer. And, and, and here goes, tell me about it, here goes the natural. Here goes the flesh. What's really leading your day? The flesh is leading your day. Let's listen to the scripture. What does it say right here? It says... For those who live according to the flesh yes. set their minds on the things of the flesh. Of the flesh. Yes. Somebody want to read for me as yeah. I go? Yeah. No, me. So, but, but, but are we set, what are we setting our mind on when you get up after you pray? <sighs> what are you setting Setting your mind to when you get up the, from praying. Natural. Natural. Oh, I'm glad you said that. He said, can I be honest? I start thinking about work. Well, yes, you got to go to work. We, but, but, the, but the point here is you start thinking about the things of the world, yes. the things of the natural, yes. the things of the flesh. Yes, sir. Right. Say that. And you cannot, everybody listen to me. Everybody yes. say you cannot. You cannot. You cannot live by the flesh. Amen. Something's going to happen during your day. Yes, Somebody's going to make you mad. Huh. You're going to cuss yes. and say, oh, forgive me, Lord. Yes. Well, why did you cuss in the first place if you got on your knees and said, lead me and guide me, Holy Spirit? Ooh. So where did I leave off? For those that live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now go on from but. Mm -hmm. The things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Whoa, stop right there. I got it, New King James, and it, and it says right here, uh, but those who live according to the Spirit, everybody say Spirit. Spirit. The things of the Spirit. So how do I get my mind back on the Spirit? Very simple solution. Guess what it is? Pray. Get in your car. You done forgot about it. God's going to, this week, God's going to bring it to your attention. And when he brings it to your attention, start praying again. Rebuke the devil. Tell, 
tell him, get behind me, Satan. You're not going to lead my day. You're not going to make me forget about the biggest and best thing that has ever happened to me. Rebuke the devil and he'll flee. Amen. Ask God for ask God for his power because his power. Do you know what happens when you start to pray? Every demon in hell starts to tremble. Yes. Because that they're scared of the power that you have. I'm talking about unloading that baggage. Yes, yes. What, are you, what are you flipping out of there? Some of the stuff you might flip out of there is uh, you won't meet it until a couple of hours later. And when it comes up, it comes up. Yes, yes, yes. And then people will real, they'll always remember that you said you were a Christian. Yes. But what is your actions saying? I'm not even an hour into the day yet. After you get off your knees, come on, y'all. You got to get this. Because it's so easy to happen. And so God is saying, he goes on to say here, he says, according to the spirit, we should be according, we should be according to the spirit. Yes. So we're dealing with two things here. What are we dealing with? Flesh and the spirit. Flesh and the spirit. Who have mercy, y'all good. Yes. That's it. The flesh and the spirit. Yes. And when, when that happens, you got to choose which one you're going to deal with. And if you forget to pray, guess which one you're going to be dealing with? Mm, mm, mm. And I just got through saying the flesh is not going to bring you any good. It, just, it messes with your attitude. It messes with your personality. It messes with your mind. It messes with your heart. It messes with your small s spirit. In fact, it takes over your small s spirit. You have a spirit personally, but you want to go by the spirit of Christ, right? You want to go by the Holy Ghost, right? Mm, I, I was watching, me and Craig, I mean, Croy was watching. Uh, the Chosen. Thank you, Croy. The Chosen. <laughs> the Chosen last night. And when Jesus came up against all those people, his disciples, let me just say it like it is, they were scared. They were just downright scared. They didn't even know how they were going to deal with this. And then one faction of Jews was on one side, mad, just mad, mad. Another faction of Jews were on, on the other side, mad. Another faction was over here, mad. And here was a a, a, a Greek that was that had came in looking all sharp and everything. He was mad, ready to fight. All of them were ready to fight. Yes. And the disciples was surrounded. And they looking around. Well, we, some of, of course, Peter, James, and John was mad. Of, they'll fight at the drop of a hat. And, and so they, here they were. And Jesus just said, his words were so unique. He just calmed them down. And then he said, he told everybody to sit down, and they wasn't sitting down. So he told his disciples, sit down. You think they were scared standing up? What do you think they were when they sit down? <laughs> they were even more scared. Yeah. Right? Amen. And so when the words start going forth, little by little, the change began to break. The change began to just come. Isn't it power in these words? Power in the world. Yes. 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 I only hit a few scriptures already. But it's power in the word. Yes. What I want you to get out of this yes. is the power that's in this word. Yes. How it can lead your life and guide your life yes. and show you exactly which way he wants you to go. Yes, sir. Yes. And then what happens the Holy Spirit that you claimed when you came up to the altar or wherever you met the Lord at, the Holy Spirit starts to rise up. 
See, the, the disciples did not know that that's what Jesus was doing. He was some. You don't have to even say it. All you got to do is think it. You don't even have to say nothing. And, 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 and I'm saying this with so, so much passion because the power of the Holy Spirit wants to take over. That's what he does. He's a leader. He's a guy. He makes us follow. And when that power of the Holy Spirit, you can see on that movie when the power of the Holy Spirit started coming down. And when Jesus hit those people with the power of the word, guess what happened? All the other people sit down. Because the power of the word, listen to me close, it calms the flesh yes. and it demands the attention. It demands to lead. It demands to, to it demands to lead and it demands for you to follow. Mm -hmm. yes. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what does it do? It pushes the flesh to the background. And it lets the Lord come to the forefront. And then the peace. Can you imagine those people sitting there all day listening to Jesus? I, I, I can remember. I, I, can, I didn't want to leave the church. I did not want to leave the church. When they baptized me, I wanted to be baptized again. Because it was just that good. But look, think about if you let that happen during your day. Every day. Mm. Think how much peace in your household. Mm. Think how much peace on your job. Oh, I, I don't think anybody could have hated going to work more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie said, can't, can't you get up in the morning? The alarm, do I have to get up and turn off the clock? <laughs> <laughs> Debbie was a joke though y'all I don't know if y'all knew it but she used to just turn over and slap me <sighs> I had to get up she just keep on doing that just turn over slap slap I say I know what you're trying to do <laughs> she had to bust out laughing but I had to get up mornings Three o'clock in the morning to be at UPS in Cerritos for five o'clock. And it wasn't easy all the time. Back in the old, older days, the line, just like he said, he used to have to get up in the morning because of my battery. I didn't have enough money to get a battery. So he pushed it down the driveway and I kicked it over. <laughs> Just popping the clutch. You know how, how we guys used to do this. I remember doing that from college because I used to park up on the hill and let it roll down and I just kick it over. God was that good. I had a car. It rolled after it got started. Man, don't stop at the bottom of the hill, though. Hey, Amen. I remember one time I was driving and my old car was smoking like mad. And I had these particular dark glasses on, so you couldn't see the smoke. And I said, what? You could barely see these, this cop behind me. And if you focus on it, you could see his lights. But I never picked up on it. And I just drove and drove, and he finally started uh, coming up beside me. And I took my glasses off. I said, oh, Lord, I'm smoking like mad. I can see his red lights flashing. And he said, do it like this. Get over. Get over. Get over. I remember I had to talk him out of um, giving me the ticket worse than it was. He gave me the ticket, but it could have been a lot worse. I said, I'm on my way to college, and, and I couldn't see your red lights or the smoke in these glasses. He said, I don't care. He wrote me up. But I, I'm saying all of that to say this. 
Even back then, the Lord that I knew that I would be here right now. Amen. And he kept me back then. Yeah. A lot of times I could have went to jail. Mm -hmm. And I remember that. I would come back and tell my mom. She said, well, don't look at me. I'm already paying for everything. <laughs> you, you're getting to be a grown-up now. You're in college, so you got to make some money. I remember going out, walking till I got a job. Was at Mark C. Bloom. Some of y'all remember that, that place a long time ago. And it kept me with the job. I had to wipe windows and um, put air in tires and open up the hood like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> had to go through all of that stuff. But God knew that way back then. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So I look at the scripture here. And I come to what I'm supposed to be talking about, the flesh. But it's a, it's a special thing that I want you to know between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh brings chaos. The spirit brings peace. What do you want to live in? Some people have gotten accustomed to the flesh. And when the flesh starts cutting up, they're so used to it, they don't know what else to do. That, that's bad, isn't it? They, they don't know how to become peaceful. They don't know how to present Jesus Christ. The question that's on that board in the back this morning, it was a powerful I thank God for that, that particular lesson because it lets us know that Jesus is so important that we have to know him to realize that he is the only way to Jesus. Mm. Yes, yes. And once you get that in your mind, mm. you will find out the only way to peace. Amen. Amen. It took me a long time. Our family. I don't know why. But it take it took well, it takes us a long time. We were the most quiet in the family. We were fighting against them all the time, not mouthing, but trying to dodge. Dodge getting fussed at, cussed at in some some instances and these were supposed to be saved folks Whew. we just sit back down and say Lord I'm too scared to mess with you because we've seen the power of the Holy Spirit in the negative what happens the consequences of not walking in the spirit Amen. Mm -hmm. as opposed to walking in the flesh. Amen. Okay, y'all ready for, me, for this to get a little bit hotter? Yes. I'm telling you about the flesh. The flesh, the human body, and its physical needs and desires, especially as contrasted, contrasted rather, with the mind and the soul. It gets so deep. The flesh gets so deep that it hits our mind. Takes over our mind. Takes over our heart. And starts trying to even dig. And cut. And make its way into our soul. But when God sees that. On your soul. That's the bottom line of the spiritual warfare. But you've got to get to the place. that Where you trust God so much. That he steps in because nobody can mess with your soul but him. But you got to get there because sometimes he lets that happen to our soul. Nobody could take it. But the devil doesn't realize that he can't take it unless he goes to God. And God says you cannot touch his soul because that belongs to me. 
But when we, I'm saying this because when we let the flesh go on and our mind gets messed up and our human body gets messed up, all of the physical, we, we try to, guys, we try to, how do, how do we try to make our bodies look? I'm going back, way back when I was young. How do we want to make our bodies look? Even when we get older, know you out of shape. <laughs> know you would take a lifetime to get your six pack back. <laughs> Sit ups, push, push ups, crunches, what else? Uh, all kind of stuff. And you just can't get that leader back in. Just can't do it. It just don't work anymore. And don't let yourself get old like me. Then you trying to walk. Ooh, I've been trying to figure out if I'm doing a mile or not. So I'm trying to get back in a little bit of shape. <laughs> but it's not happening. <laughs> At least not as quick as I want it to happen. <laughs> Look at your paper. You all got your paper? Yes. Look at that paper. If you are hiding things from people, it's that first fill in. If you are hiding things from people, it's supposed to be a comma there, remember you can't hide them from God. If you're hiding things from people, Remember, you can't hide them from God. So if they are not uh, spiritually minded, there's only one other place it can be. Carnality comes pride. Uh, fleshly things comes pride. Arrogance. Ugliness. No patience. Self-centeredness, thank you. It's all about me. I don't care about anybody else because everybody else is under me. <laughs> Always listen to yourself, saints. When you're going overboard, you're using I too much. I this, I that. What about God? What about Jesus? What about the spiritual? What about the holiness? What about the righteousness? That's how you can regulate this stuff. When you know what's coming out. What did I talk about last week? Virtue. Yes. Then I talked about knowledge, right? We've got to know when the point comes when I'm not being spiritual. Amen? Amen. Is that found foundation enough for fleshly minded folks? Sure well, listen to what the scripture says. Mm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Ooh, you get a double, a, a double, a double promise here. Whoa. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And peace. Okay, if you, if you, <laughs> if you're not spiritually minded then you must be carnally minded. Amen? And if you're carnally minded, you are dying every day. Anybody thought about it like that? If you are spiritually minded, you have life, and on top of that, you got peace every day. Oh, it got, quiet. It got quiet. Somebody in here don't believe that. Oh, let me just say it another way. Somebody in here been fussing so long they can't believe it. <laughs> what are we going to do? Why, why are we fussing and cussing? With any, do you ever get anywhere when you're fussing and cussing? No. no, no. 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 When are you going to figure that out? When are we going to figure it out? Who took me 25 years. <laughs> but I want you all to figure it out. I'm telling you now because God doesn't want us to be carnally minded. Do you know what carnal, carnal, the word carnal means? It means hostility towards God. Let me put it another way. Hostility towards godliness. Wasn't that one of the things I talked about last week? 
Hostility towards spirituality. Hostility, hostility towards righteousness. Let, let me say it another way. Hostility towards righteous living. It kicks spirituality out of the window. That's what it does in our lives. And then the devil takes over and can't nobody get along with you. It's total, not just chaos, total chaos. Y'all don't believe that. Keep living and keep messing with the carnal mind. Oh, let, me, let me get up to this verse. Seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity, hostility against God, for it is not subject to the law. Let me stop right there. Stop right there. You know why I got to stop right there? Because the law is what? It's, the law is the Ten Commandments. Jesus didn't come to kick the Ten Commandments out of the window. He came to fulfill the Ten Commandments. And if carnality is against the Ten Commandments or our peace, and it's not our righteousness, it's totally against God, and so it says that hostility comes against God, for it is not subject to the law. It's not listening to the law. Now, we can't live by the law. Everybody get this? You hearing me? The law is there for us to try to abide by. But God will give us the power to live the law if we have the Holy Ghost. Woo, have mercy. Y'all. Boy, in the Holiness Church, that's been shouting right there. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. that. That those words are so powerful because it's all found the foundation or the foundated portion of that, if, it's, if that, if you will, if that's a word. You can make it up. It will lift you above carnality. Yes. It'll lift you above. Fleshly minded folks, it'll move you away from being I idle. Listen, carnality is preoccupation or the body and its passions and its appetite. What is this body wanting? Ooh, man, Father's Day. Is this body wanting women? Oh, I'm getting real. Is this body wanting to eat all the time and everything? Yes. <laughs> what does this body want? Is this body tied to fun? Or is it spiritual with joy? There is a difference. Y'all heard me say the difference so many times. Is this body of ours, is it patient? Is it Persistent? Does it have perseverance? Are we able to do things that are difficult and not get mad, start cussing and fussing because we can't do it? One of the reasons you can't do it because you haven't got on your knees and prayed about it first. You, you don't, some of the reasons is because I'm talking to the guys now. You don't trust God. You don't trust him enough to know that you can get through anything and everything by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whew, have mercy. I'm thinking about that this week. I lost something. And I could not find it anywhere. And I didn't believe that I would be able to find it. And something, the Holy Spirit, deep down inside of me, said, have you prayed? 
God, God is so unique. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all are one. And they don't contradict each other. And the one thing I didn't do is pray. I think it was 15 minutes after I prayed. The Lord took me right to that thing. I said, is that where it's been all this time? I looked here about five times. I know I looked about five times. But that's what he does. That's what the Holy Spirit does. We've got to take advantage of the who the Holy Spirit is. Listen to me close. You've got to take advantage of who Christ Jesus is. And we got to take advantage of who God is. Because they're not going to contradict each other. No. <laughs> They, they say, oh, you're polytheistic. You got more than one God. No. You better know I got more than one God. But what you don't know is the same person. <laughs> That's what, you got to get that. But if you don't get it, you got to question your Holy Spirit. Mm. Do I have enough of the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Am I living in a carnal mind? Am I living in sensuality so much that I've got to have the best of the very best of the best? I was talking to an atheist this week. Uh -oh. And I was trying to get that person to listen to me. Of course, I'm putting it out there. I wasn't holding back. And I wasn't, I, I, will, I know I didn't have them scared at first. But when I knew that they were really backing off on it, was trying to get to the point to where I could tell them, you're not a, you're you're not an atheist, you're agnostic. But I didn't get to that question, because before that question came, that person said, "Can we stop talking about this?" And I respected, I re I knew how they felt, but I got to the point to where the Lord told me, "Back off." And don't throw your pearls to swine. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we got to realize how to back off. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But do you know what you have when you back off? You got the power of prayer. Where'd that come from? God. Came from the Holy Ghost telling us to pray. Yeah. I don't know if I'll talk to that person again. But I know I put something on their mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because whatever the pressure was, and I wasn't even trying to pressure, I knew the Holy Ghost was stepping in. Mm -hmm. See, what we have to understand, it is not us that does the drawing. Yeah. Amen. It's Jesus yeah. and the Holy Spirit yeah. and God the Father yeah. that does the drawing. Yeah. We can only bring them to the throne. Uh -huh. And I know when I got to that point, I brought them to the throne. Then my job was to back off and pray. Now, I haven't had that hard of a conversation in a long time. But thank God I realized to back off and pray. You all don't need to know the name. You all don't need to know who it is. But you can pray, amen? amen. So now here I am asking us to pray. And there's power in prayer. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together. Amen? Amen. And so I know the carnalness that was in that spiritual conversation was really giving a hard time to that carnal mind. And that carnal mind was being challenged by the power of the Holy Spirit. Y'all still here? Yes, and so I know that the mind, carnal mindedness the giving to the lures and the lust of carnality is really strong. It is the quality or the state of being merely temporal or worldly. It's not too hard for God, really. And if it, God says, it's not too hard for us. It is a lack of spiritual vitality and maturity. What this is... It's the state of being in 
spiritual warfare. God does not want us to make saints. When the Bible says, go ye therefore into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the devil knows that, so he messes with you just with your mind first, then he brings on the carnality, the meat hooks, and you can't get out of it. Look at your, look at your Bible. One, I mean, look at your page one more time, the paper. It says, if an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Y'all ever heard that? Yes. <laughs> yes. If an idle mind is the devil's workshop I, workshop, I shudder to think what a carnal mind can be. It's, it, it, it's messy, y'all. And so he works this kind of way. I'll mess with his mind. Then I'll mess with his heart. Then I'll try to mess with his soul to weaken him. And then what I'll do, I'll bring on the carnality. <laughs> I'll get him with that. <laughs> and, and men, we fall into that mess. We fall into it. And God says, hold firm yes. to where your help comes from. Hold tight to me. Look at, focus on me. When those things come, focus on me. Then I can give you peace where you'll understand what God is trying to tell you. You'll understand where the Holy Spirit is trying to lead you. You'll understand what Jesus did so long ago trying to show you how you can live you will live a perfect, almost perfect life. Almost perfect life. I wanted to say perfect. I'm getting close, but I ain't there yet because the devil never stops. You let your guard down here, he comes with his mess. And so I want you to understand, I don't care how sick you are. I don't care how hurt you are. I don't care how poor you are. Jesus can fix it. He knows what to do. And after all of that, after all of that, if you die and live here and you have trusted God, you go into heaven. Yeah. Woo! Have mercy, Jesus. So you look at this, you look at this last point on this paper. Spiritual, spirituality, spiritually minded people. The Holy Ghost filled people are spiritually minded, full of virtue. Full of knowledge, full of temporal, temperance and self-control, yeah. full of perseverance, yeah. full of godliness, yeah. full of goodness and brotherly love. Yeah. Oh, you've got to love everybody. you got to love people that don't love you. you got to keep on loving them. you got to keep on praying for them. you got to keep on talking to them. Oh, have mercy. If you get the chance to just show them anything about your life. Show them Jesus. Show them a committed life. Show them the goodness of God. Show them that graciousness. I'm talking about spiritually minded people. People that's patient with God. People that know what brotherly love is. People that know the essence. The sympathy. The empathy. The passion, yeah. the compassion yeah. of who Jesus is. Yeah. Once we get it right, yeah. once we get it right, yeah. Jesus will be there in front of you to lead you and guide you, to show you the light in the path, the goodness, the stars, the sun, the moon, all of the brightness, because you become the light. Yeah. Oh, I want to finish up with this. Men, fathers, boys, males, have you unpacked your baggage? Yes. Oh, somebody missed it. Yes. Have you unpacked your baggage? What's in that baggage? What's in that baggage? I can tell you what's in mine. I can tell you what's in mine. Yes. Goodness. Yes. 
grace, grace. mercy, yes. kindness, love, yes. happiness, peace, temperance, yes. good things. Yes. Ah, who searches the mind and the heart? Who searches the mind and the heart? Because in the mind and in the heart should be the same thing that's in the baggage. <laughs> Amen? Oh, let's stop right there. Father's Day time is here. Listen, everybody stand on your feet. God is saying this to us. How are you going to live after hearing God's word? I don't know about you. But I want him to convince me, convict me, constrain me. I want him to counsel me. I want him to console me, hold me in the palm of his hands. I want him to lead me and guide me. How about you? What is it going to take? You've heard the word today. I'm not ashamed of the word. But men, take the time. To lead your families by the way of Christ. It's nothing like joy, nothing like peace, nothing like goodness, and it's nothing like grace. Is there anybody in the building that hasn't had the chance to make that relationship with the Lord Jesus? He's an awesome God, isn't he? A God of goodness and a God of grace. Do you love him? Do you have a better understanding of who he is and what he does? Do you want to be closer to him? What's number one in your life? Is it your everyday routine? Does he come every, does he come under your house? Does he come under your car? Does he come under your children? He wants to be number one in your life. This day, you all, this day, take evaluation of where God is, where Jesus is, where the Holy Spirit is in your life. Will you all hear me on this? He really means it when he says, I won't have any other God before me. So we have to be careful on how we deal with life. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the greatness of your word. Thank you for the goodness of your word. Lord, move our fleshly mind. Break up the carnality, Lord. Trash it, Lord. Throw it away. Put it behind us. That heart of stone. You're the only one that can change it into a heart of flesh. Your word tells us that. So, Lord, change our minds, our hearts, our spirit to a spiritually mind. A mind dedicated to you. A mind that's filled with the Holy Ghost. A mind that loves you. And we thank you for this time. There might be someone in the building right now that does not know Christ. And if you would want to meet him, would you come up right now? Just give your heart to the Lord. If there's one person that would come up right now give their heart to the Lord. He's calling right now. This is a time when God calls your heart. And they're one. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for St. Paul Family Ministries. Here we are, tucked away, back in this corner, Lord Jesus. You know, and we know that you can send whomever you wish. Send those souls your way. And 
Lord, the souls that are in the building right now, let them know to talk to people and try to tell people out in the world about you and how good you are, how faithful you are, how trusting you are. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the fathers that are here. We ask that you give them a special blessing. Lord, as they go out, wherever they're going this afternoon, go before them, Lord. Let their light shine that people may know who Jesus truly is. Many of them have questions. Many of the people that out in the world have questions. Send them to the light. I ask that in the name of Jesus. And as we get ready to take our leave, Lord, watch over us. Keep us in your care. Hold us in the palm of your hand. Lord, we love you. We honor you. Can we all say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone.